right. It's terrible. Since um, 1985, from 1985 till now, uh, we've lost 50%. And by 2022, seven years, we'll lose another 25%. So we will have lost, since 1985, 75% of the Great Barrier Reef. On our watch, it happened. And the bad things that have happened to the Great Barrier Reef are 99% due to human activity. What in particular is contributing that? Um, about 50% storms. That's related to global warming because there's more energy in the system. About 40% the um, crown of thorns starfish because we've created an environment where it can flourish and about 10% other stuff. So with the crown of thorns starfish, that's something that we've been familiar with in terms of the problem we've been tackling. Yeah. Why are they proving such a problem? Um, because they're individual predators that go around and they sit on top of the coral animal, so the rock has a very thin layer of flesh over it and then turns the stomachs inside out and then dissolves it and comes back. And it just does it one by one. So you've got to stop them one by one. It's not as though you can inject into the whole reef a toxin which will kill only the crown of thorn starfish. And we've done all sorts of very subtle things, like, for example, when we do the uh, fishing around there, you then remove some of the herbivore fish, which then uh, interfere with the... Um, uh, they allow the seaweed to come back, and then when the herbivore fish go, then the predators that eat them go, and those predators also eat the crown of thorn starfish. There's a whole bunch of a subtle web of life where we've created an environment which makes it easier for them to come through. So they're the guys knocking off some 40% of the reef. So tell us about what the Great Barrier Reef actually is. I mean, what is a coral polyp and how do they create something as vast as the Great Barrier Reef? It's, it's an amazing creature and in my reading uh, I discovered that they do their spawning one week after the full moon in October and November uh, for the inner and outer reefs. Uh, one week after the full moon because that's when the tides are at their lowest, the difference between the high and the low tide. And so what happened is at that time, the, um, they, they have a different bunch of ways of having sex, either by themselves or with each other or, or complicated. They have a bunch of ways, but basically the eggs, larvae things all end up floating around. It's like a big soup. It's a, it's a huge... I, I want to see it. I want to see it. I've never <laughs> seen it. And then, over a period of weeks, they then settle down onto a rock. So you've got these larvae that are millimetres thick and, you know, centimetres long, and they settle down and they cannot survive by themselves. They're too simple to survive by themselves. So they say, here I am, I've found a rock and I'm sitting on this rock. I am now glued to this rock forever. I'm not going. I'm an animal. I'm sitting on this rock. But I can't feed myself. All I can do is suck in water. And so they say, please invade me, the algae. And the algae invade them. The symbiodinium, they're a little creature that invades and actually lives inside the flesh. Within each cubic centimetre of coral flesh, there's a million of these buggers. And they live in an essential relationship. And by the way, when they go... They, the colouring goes with them and that leaves, that's the bleaching thing. And they live with them and they, these little creatures give them the fats, the proteins, the carbohydrates that the coral animal needs and the coral animal gives their little creatures inside itself. It gives it its waste products like the carbon dioxide and the methane and, and the ammonia and so forth. And the, the invader is actually really weird. You'd almost think that they were not from Earth. Firstly, they've got... 100 times the DNA that we have. Wow. And they're, they're, they're tiny little buggers. Wow. Secondly, their DNA is totally unlike all other DNA on the planet. All the other DNA, there are four types of rungs on the DNA ladder of life. They've got five. Go figure. And finally, they do photosynthesis, sure, but by a completely different method, totally unknown anywhere else on the planet. They're, it's almost like they got dropped in by the aliens who built the pyramids. Just kidding, <laughs> right? So that is the creature that is living on the Great Barrier Reef. And every day, to compensate for erosion, it has to make a couple of grams of um, calcium carbonate. And the thing is that the calcium carbonate production rate is going down. Oh, by the way, the oceans are also getting more acid as well. That's interfering with it. The calcium carbonate tends to dissolve. So we've got a situation where the coral animal is shrinking in its habitat and we've lost 50% and we're going to lose another 25% within seven years.
countries. So it won't be the Great Barrier Reef for much longer? It could turn into, unfortunately, the mediocre Barrier Reef. You see, the thing is that the creature that's there, the coral, it's got the wrong characteristics for surviving in an environment when things are changing rapidly. If you want to survive in an environment where things are changing rapidly, you want to have sexual reproduction so that the babies are different from the parents and you want to have a high turnover, you know, like a generation time of a year or two. These guys, generation time of half a century or a century. And a lot of the time they give birth to creatures that are the same. Hence, we could be heading for the mediocre barrier reef.